Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope you're having a wonderful day. On this video tutorial, I'm going to show you some super cute crafts. Following along with this bee theme, which we did yesterday, if you missed that, I'll show you the projects, but you can watch it on replay. And um, we're going to just take this idea one step further. So it should be really good as you're hopping on. Say hello, let me know where you're watching from, feel free to sprinkle, feel free to ask questions, all that normal jazz. Okay, so our canvases that we're working with are going to be, for the most part, painted this inexpensive uh, craft paint. It's matte acrylic paint from Apple Barrel called Yellow. And these were the projects yesterday and they turned out so cute. I use painter's tape to mark off different sections of the canvas. So for this one, I just went every other one and then I left, I did the top all in this yellow. And this one I did every four inches. Aren't they cute? And then we stenciled with some adorable bee stencils. And then I showed you guys how to use a palette knife to do this edging, which I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but I love it. So that was the that was what we did yesterday. Today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can make a honeycomb, and then we're going to layer it with one of these adorable little stencils um, that are called Be Kind Quads. This one says Sweet Bee. This one says Hello Honey. This one says Be Kind. And this one says, let it be. And they all have these adorable bees on them. I mean, it's a super cute stencil. And this is called a honeycomb stencil. So before I came live, I painted some of my canvases yellow. I have another one over here. And then this one I just stenciled, but I'll show it to you in just a second. So what we're going to do next is we're going to be using this and some white chalk paste to create a background that looks like a yellow honeycomb. Oh my gosh. And um, this stencil had been in my drawer for a little while, but it was not on my radar really until I saw my friend Kathleen V do a video where she used this um, on some uh, canvas deck cloth that she painted orange and then she used this and white ink to make some adorable stuffies that were in the shape of carrots. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this stencil is so cool. Whether you want it to look like a, um, a beehive or, or a honeycomb, I mean, or not. So I am going to fuss it just a little bit before I lay it down. I could fuzz on my t-shirt. I could fuzz on my jeans. I'm just going to use my tacky towel right here to fuzz. And I have used this already a few times today. I'll show you. Super duper duper cute. Oh my goodness. So I'm just turning it around because this is a big stencil. Okay, I'm going to say good enough. Alrighty. So we're going to be stenciling over the top of this painted canvas. This one came from Dollar Tree. It was $1.25. I painted one coat of this yellow paint on it. And then I did give it a quick little coat of a clear matte sealer spray because uh, it just makes things look nicer, I think. Um, and I want to kind of fiddle around with how I'm laying this out. So... It has a, uh, the sides and the top are straight, or as straight as possible, and the edges look about the same. Okay, so this is what this looks like. And these stencils, if you're new, uh, they're from magnoliadiy.com. I'm gonna scoot you back just a teeny bit. They're, um, they're reusable many 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 times they are which way do i need to go this way sorry 
Um, they're reusable many, many, many times. They're adhesive, they're mesh, they're sticky, they're great to work with. Okay, so I'm gonna just use white chalk paste and it is gonna be so incredibly cute because I've already done that one over here that I'll show you in just a minute. So this is just plain white chalk paste. Chalk paste has a black lid. And I think I have this all pushed down good enough. And I'm using a small cut apart squeegee to just quickly push this chalk paste through the holes on my stencil. You can see how quick and easy this is. And I'm not gonna keep going over it. I just wanna make sure that I get all of it covered. And I did, this other canvas I'm gonna show you in just a second is one of those thick ones that can actually stand up on its own. And I did something cool with the sides of it. So I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, I'm just pulling off the big, thick places. And this is what it looks like. This is so cute. Oh my gosh, I'll hold it up close in just a second so you can see. I'm laying my stencil down, face down in my tub of water over here until I can get into the kitchen to, um, to spray it. <sighs> Look how cute that is. Oh my goodness. It's absolutely adorable. What do you think? Okay, we're not finished, but this is the first step. Well, the first step was to paint your canvas with acrylic paint and then stencil the honeycomb. And you have to use chalk paste for that, for this particular application. Don't use acrylic paint on your stencils unless you only want to use them once. Because paint, paint is paint is paint is paint. And this is not paint, this is chalk paste. It's not chalk paint. This stuff won't ruin your stencils, but any kind of acrylic paint, craft paint, um, chalk paint, uh, latex paint, any kind of paint um, dries super fast and it will clog up all the little holes in your stencil before you can wash them out. And then without those little holes, you have no design. So if you wanna use your stencils 25, 30, 40 times or more, <laughs> Then don't do that, ever. Okay, I'm gonna lay this right here to dry. I'm gonna throw these guys into my little tub. And let me show you the one that I did before I came live. It's super cute. I did have a little boo-boo right here. It's okay. So what I did, I painted it, let it dry, sprayed it. Clear matte sealer. Then I laid the stencil on it and I did the top. And then I folded the sides down and I did the sides. And I just think this sitting on your shelf is gonna be absolutely adorable. Okay, by contrast, this is one I did as well. And for this one, I just used some yellow chalk paste, it's called daffodil. And that's cute too, but if you ask me, this is infinitely better. It looks more like a honeycomb than this one. I just wanted you to be able to compare. Okay, so where was that boo-boo? Because I want that boo-boo to be on the bottom. All right, so now we're going to do the next step which is to apply one of these um, Be Kind stencils that are so adorable. This comes with four, the four different pieces and you just cut it apart. This one says Sweet Be, this one says Let It Be, this one says Be Kind, and this one says Hello Honey. And I think going along with this kind theme, I'm gonna use the one here that says Be Kind. Okay, let me grab my fuzzy towel and 
You always want to mark the back of your stencils. It needs a chicken, Deborah. That's so funny. Oh my gosh, I gave the chicken tea towel, the crazy chicken lady tea towel, to my friend at Bible study yesterday. And she loved it. She absolutely loved it. She showed it to everyone. Um, and she had made, made an egg custard pie, which I've never had before. It was sweet, um, using the eggs that her chickens lay. And anyways, I'll have to share a picture that she took and posted on her Facebook page and tagged me in um, with her uh, egg custard pie and the tea towel. It was really sweet. Anyways. Links, please. Yes, Tammy, as soon as I'm finished here, I'll get you links. I'll get you links for these guys, too. For this stencil says, always be kind. And for this one, which is the queen bee. And then I'll get you the honeycomb stencil, which is this. And I'll get you the, uh, the be kind quads and, and the link to chalk paste also. I'll get you all of that. Okay, wait, which side? This is the up. So after my little honeycomb was dry, I sprayed it. And that just, it protects um, your design. I'm just thinking, I might need to, to um, pose this just a little bit more. I can do it on my t-shirt, on my jeans. I want to just make sure that it doesn't pull up this design. That should be plenty good. And I was kind of thinking about doing the palette knife edging, but, and I might, I might still do that on this one. We'll work, we'll, um, I'll work on this after and share pictures. And I probably will try doing a palette knife on that because I didn't do the edges. Um, but it'll need to be sprayed before I do anything else. Okay, so be kind, and it has this adorable little bee. We're just going to use the black chalk paste, and this is not going to take very much at all. Just going to push the chalk paste the holes on my stencil and then I'm going to pull up the big globs, the thick places and I'm going to stop right there and let's peek. It's super cute. Oh my goodness. I'll hold it up. Oh my goodness, this is so adorable. What do you guys think? Wouldn't this be so cute sitting out? If you have a bee-themed kitchen, you should invest in these stencils because you could do a hundred different things. You could make tea towels, you could make an apron, um, you could make totes, pillows, um, all kinds of signs. You can make note cards. You can do so many different things. Anyways, tell me what you think. Does it need the black edging around it? What do you guys think? Or should I leave it plain? Look how cute that little bee is. Tell me what you think in the comments. Put this in my little tub. And, um... That is pretty much, oh, dang, always getting it on my fingers. That is pretty much our whole project. We could try, should we try this one and see how it looks? I think, what the heck? Let's do this one that says Sweet Bee. It's pretty sticky. It's going to need to be fussed.
we'll see how this looks. I mean, I think the, the white chalk paste over the top of the yellow paint shows up a lot better. Uh, but this could be cute too. Let me get my ruler because I kind of want to see if I'm sort of in the center. Pretty good. Yeah, let's say good. These Be Kind quads are super cute. These are mine from last year. So, in case uh, you didn't know, um, they are reusable many, many, many times. And what I do, I have um, just a bunch of different stencils for different seasons and occasions. And when it's, not so when it's winter, for example, I just have these put away and I can pull them out when I'm ready. Oh my gosh, that is pretty darn cute. I didn't have another square canvas, so I used this one from Dollar Tree. But, um, oh my gosh, my hands. But this could be pretty cute if we did it like this one on a square canvas. Let's try doing the edging and just see how that looks. What the heck? If you missed yesterday's video, you may not even know what it is that I'm talking about. Um, what I'm talking about is using a palette knife to create an interesting edge. So let me put some chalk paste on a paper plate. And this is a Dollar Tree palette knife. And you're going to hold it like this with your finger right here where it bends. And you're going to be dipping this in your medium. It could be paint, but as long as we have chalk paste out, we might as well use that. Um, you just dip that in there. And then you're going to tap it off a little bit. And... the bumps on your project sort of grab the medium. And for me, it's easier to go right to left, um, but hold your palette knife however it feels most comfortable for you. Oops, that was kind of a big blob, but that's okay. I like this look. Alternatively, you could use the chalk pins and do a line squiggle squiggle or a, a line dot dot dots or a squiggle dot 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 or that is pretty cute too so you know what now what i really want to know from you guys please is do you think I should do that on this one or should I leave it plain? Tell me what you think in the comments. Let me hold these up. Tell me what you think. Uh, do it this or a this. This is a thumb, this is a heart. Um, say something to me in the comments. Julie says plain. Oh, I see there's questions about the difference between ink and chalk paste. I'll answer those in just a second. But if you want to see what I have coming up tomorrow over the weekend or Sunday for Christ and Crafting, um, if you do it this or this and say something to me in the comments, um, and make sure you've liked and followed this page, then your, your chance 
that Facebook's algorithms will, will be in your favor and that you'll get served. What I'm doing will improve. Okay, so what's the difference between chalk, paste, and ink? This is a question that, um, that I get all the time. Okay, this is ink and it has a white top. This is chalk paste and it has a black top. Ink is white, chalk paste is black. Ink, the easiest way to state this is, ink is for fabric and ink is for ceramics. And it needs to be heat set in the oven. And then it's almost like it melts into your fabric so if you're doing tea towels, a t-shirt, a pillow, a tote bag, an apron, something that you might want to wash, you definitely need ink after you heat set it with a hot iron and this ink goes into the fibers, you can wash and dry it and actually use it. This is ink. Same thing with ceramics. Um, it does work better on pieces that aren't super shiny and highly glazed because it does the same thing with those too. It kind of melts into the pores of your ceramics. So look for unglazed ceramics to do ink on. Um, and unfortunately, most of the stuff from Dollar Tree is so super shiny glazed that um, this doesn't work as good as it would on an unglazed piece of ceramic. But you put it in the oven and you bake it at 350 for like 30 minutes. Um, you put it in cold, bring your oven up to 350, keep it in there for 30 minutes, leave it, leave it in your oven, bring that temperature back to zero, and then take it out, and it's permanent. Not necessarily dishwasher safe, though, um, but it is permanent. So ink is for fabric and ceramics. It's not for wood. It's not for chalkboards. It's not for any of those other things. Ink is for fabric and ceramics. Chalk paste is for everything else. And chalk paste is like what your teacher used on the blackboard when you were a child. It's not permanent, you can wash it off, but it does dry hard and stable. So unless you bump it or actually wash it off, it's gonna stay and if you want it to be forever, like I used chalk paste on these. I want it to be forever. I'm going to take it outside later today because it's a beautiful day in Georgia, and I'm going to spray it with a couple of light coats of a clear matte sealer, and then it'll be perfect. It'll be permanent. Um, I mean, it's hard and stable. It's not going to fall off. But if you brushed up with something wet on it, it could smooch a little bit. Uh, or if it was getting a lot of friction, it could smear. So, um, yeah, when you do mugs, when you use the ink on ceramics in your oven, there's no odor. There's really, I don't think I've opened this one yet. Have I? Yes, I have. There's really not much of an odor to it anyways. But it's not toxic to heat set these things in your oven. So, ink is for fabric and ceramics. Don't make that mistake. Chalk paste is for everything else. Ink is not for chalkboards. It's not for, it's not for things that are not fabric or ceramics. So, anyways, I hope that answers that question. Denise says she loves these stencils. Yeah, if you want a link, to this adorable always be kind stencil that has this beautiful wreath and this B. Say link. If you want a link to this awesome queen bee stencil, it also has a crown, but I just opted not to use it. Say link. If you want a link to this honeycomb pattern, say link. Or if you want to link to the Be Kind quads, say link. Um, and I'll get you that right away. All right, and feel free to sprinkle this, especially if you have a sister or a neighbor or a friend 
uh, that loves bees or has bees in their kitchen or something. And um, keep in mind that you could make them some great gifts. Uh, or you could share, sp sprinkle this video to your social media so if they're interested, they can click on the links that I'm going to provide or ask me for a link and then they can go and get their own. So, I'm loving all the bee stuff, but I think this is going to be the last day of bees. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what, we're going to go back to the beach for a little bit. And then I have some glass containers that I want to work on. I also want to do some Mod Podge of napkins onto candles. So I have a huge variety of things coming up. And I hope that you'll come back here to DIY Dreaming to do some of those craft projects with me. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you guys later.